Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. I am shifting from working on tidy models and model development to ML ops. Um, uh, model deployment, model monitoring, and an important piece of model monitoring is aggregating at some important um, window, like using sliding window functions to be able to aggregate, say, model metrics. Today in this screencast, we're going to talk about how to use the slider um, package by my coworker Davis Vaughn to um, to compute these kinds of sliding aggregated um, uh, quantities. Let's get started. All right, let's get started. So um, this data set is actually from last month, but I um, I personally have been pretty busy getting ready for our studio comp, which was last week and so fun. But I wanted to come back to it because I think it's a nice and interesting data set that reminds me of some stuff that I've been doing. So this is pretty big. Let's um let's see here. How how is this distributed in time? All right, it looks like it looks like I'm going to I'm going to maybe take like the last, I don't know, 15 years or so because these early years there's not that many um collected. Not many of this data was collected then. So I'll probably um I don't know, I'll make some kind of a cutoff here and um let's see what else we have. Um, the, it is pretty interesting because the date somehow is getting, um, pulled in as a double. I wonder why. Uh, let's say, let's say, I don't want to pull it, but let's say slice sample, um, like this, and then let's pull that date. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a date to me. It looks like it'll be okay. So probably what one of the first things I will do is because that's what I want to aggregate over, like I talked about in the in, in the intro. So let's see. Let's take the date, the price, and I don't know. I'm probably not gonna I may not actually use that, but um let's take these things and then let's say date and let's year month day of date like that. Whoops baths. Um, okay, so now we convert it for a date to a date here. So now R knows that it's a date. We've got the price, bedrooms, bathrooms, lots of NAs. You know what? I probably won't do that. Let's just make this, let's just make this short and sweet and just talk about the aggregation. Um, I am going to, like, what is this? Room, room in apartment. Okay, so some of them, just a few of them, are just rooms in um, a, a renting a room, not renting in a whole apartment. So let's say room in apartment is less than one. Let's say year is greater than, I don't know. I'll just take the last sort of 15 years-ish of this. Nice. They're not in order, which is interesting. I wonder what kind of order they're in. Nice. Okay. So let's use this. Let's use this as our data set. So let's assign this to something like so. So that's, you know, that's quite a lot of data and we can, um, we can uh, look at how, like how is the, the price changing over time. So I am going to do that by computing um, a, a mean, an aggregated mean. So, you know, we could do like group by um, with a Luberday function that takes the floor or rounds the date and then summarizes. But I want to show how to use slider because it lets you do things that um, other other sort of tooling do, does not let you allow you to do. It's quite flexible. So I'm going to load um, a slider. And slider has a couple of different sort of families. And the one that I'm going to use is this period family. So it reminds me a lot of per map, of map from the per package, because you can specify what type you'll get out at the end. Like, do you expect to get a character? Do you expect to get a, a numeric value? Do you want to um, have it, uh, you know, bind the rows together into a data frame? So let's, let's start here with a double because we want to... Um, compute a mean, a mean price. So, um, and, and I'll pop up the, 
I'll pop up the um, help here so we can look at it. So for a slide period, did I do this right? Nope. Slide. This that's a more um, slide period. Let's look here. Okay. So this one is gives you out a list. Um, this one gives you out you know, all these different things. So we're going to use the double one. So X is the, we have to scroll way down, the, the, the vector to iterate over. So for us, that's our, that's our data frame, rent. Um, I is, um, what is the index that you want to break apart into periods? So let's, let's say that is, um, whoops, that is date. Here, so that's what we want to in iterate. So first, what's the data? Like, what are you going to iterate over? And then what is the index that you're going to use? And then the next thing is the period. So we have all these options, right? Like I could do week, I could do, um, you know, week of the year, month of the year. I am going to do just plain week, just plain week like this. But you can see we have a lot of options here, which is so nice. And then the next thing I need to do is what is the function? So I'm going to do it like this um, with the tilde, like the anonymous function format. And I am going to say mean. And what am I doing the mean of? I could say dot x price like this. So I think and then... These are other things we'll talk about more in just a minute, but I think this will get us started. So, um, woo, so there we go. There. So what we've done is we have calculated, you know what, let's not do week, let's do month. There you go. Okay, so this is for every month that we have, it, um, aggregating using the date, what is the monthly mean price over here. So nice, that worked, that was really, you know, that, that works well. Um, so I think I would rather um, uh, not have a vector here. I'd rather have a data frame so that I can, um, you know, have the the date together with the mean price and maybe I'll compute the number of, you know, the number of like uh, listings that we had and all that type of thing. So to do that, you use slide period um, data frame like with rows DFR to bind things into rows and it it this all looks the same except for the last bit like and here I think it's going to be annoying to try to write this as an anonymous function so I'm going to write an actual function let's call it um let's call it mean rent and so let's let's write this little function so mean rent like this, and what's going to come in is the data. So we're going to do this a bunch of times. Um, so let's see. I'm going to let's see. I'm going to summarize because we're going to have a bunch of little um, little chunks of data. So I'm going to summarize the data. Uh, so the date. That's what I want. So let's say we could do the you know the end of the month or the beginning of the month. Um, let's do that. Min date. Uh, the rent is going to be the mean mean price and I don't know let's just say how many we have there like that so that's oops uh, so that is um, the function I know I've made the function and now I can apply that function and I end up with a data frame which is so nice and I can see you know it's January February March, etc., and the data dates that I have. And this is the mean rent, and this is how many listings there were. So I said, hey, please tell me how many listings there are. So that is nice. Okay, but those of you who are familiar with sliding windows are probably saying, you have not made a sliding window <laughs> yet. This is just month by month by month. And um, now I can make actually a sliding window. So let me come down here. And uh, let's, so let's make a sliding window that is the current month plus the previous month. So if I go here, now I'm going to go down to these, to these. So I'm saying every month, I could say every two months, but that would again not be sliding. That would be like every two months. Um, here, before and after, these are how I start to get my sliding windows. So if I say before equals one, um, what I'm saying is let's use the current month and let's use the previous month. So it's a set of sliding windows that slide along 
and include whatever current month we're on and the previous, whatever current and the previous. And you can see the numbers are starting to be slightly different, right? Because we're aggregating over a slightly larger window. I think it's time to make some plots. I haven't done this yet. So I could save this object, but let's, it, went, it went ran fast. So I'm just going to, um, I am just going to make a, a, a visualization here. So let's say, um, let's put date on the x-axis, rent on the y-axis. That's it, I guess. And um, let's say, let's make a line. And I like them to be a little bit transparent like that. So it's computing, it is making a graph, and here is what rent in San Francisco looks like for um, over these over these times that I have, these times. So uh, it's it's super, there's a lot of variation, right? Like month to month. Because this, well, this is the one that is just every month. And um, it also looks like maybe there are some months where we didn't have, where data wasn't collected. But we can see the overall trend, like it was flat-ish, and dram rose dramatically between about 2012 and 2017 or so, like dramatic rise and then it kind of flattish again. So let's do the same thing here uh, where we're aggregating. And notice we're starting to have things smooth out, right? And if I do before equals two, it's taking the current month plus the two previous months. And it's really starting to smooth out now, right? Like, so, th so we're aggregating at larger and larger windows. Let's, in fact, figure out a way to aggregate at a whole bunch of windows. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use per to do this, to iterate over. So let me start by making a table. Let's try six months. So what, so I'm going to say aggregate. So this is current month plus one month behind, current month plus two months behind, current month plus three months behind, all the way up to current month plus six months behind. And now let's uh, let's put this into a data frame so that I can, um, you know, I can I can easily plot with it and whatnot. So let's see, let's call this. We're we're you know we're finding the mean rent here, and so I'm gonna map. So what am I mapping over? I'm going to map over this column. So I'm going to map over before. And what am I going to map with? I'm going to map with this, like so. So I need that to make that anonymous function. And I am going to put my value there. So at first, I'm going to map with before equals 1, then 2, then 3, and all the way up to 6. So let's run this. So in each of these little tibbles is um, the, the aggregation at the different time periods. And now let's unnest that. Unnest mean rent like so. Um, perfect. Now I have them all in a, in a data frame. And now I can just do the same kind of um, plot that I made here, except I am going to say color equals before, like that. Nice. Ah, okay, so I need to also say group. It can't tell that they are, they don't belong together. Ah, there we go. All right, let this, let's make this final plot a little bit nicer. So let me, um, I'm going to use everyone's favorite color scale. Here it is. It's continuous, so I'm going to do it like so. It's not exactly continuous, but close enough, I think, to pretend, I guess. Um, y, I'm going to put, those are, that's dollars on the Y axis. So let's, let's quickly and e easily do that. Uh, scale, it's from the scales package, dollar, like that. And... When I feel like when X is a date or a year, you really don't need to tell people that because they can um, they can usually tell. Okay, so this is what's on the Y or what is color here is um, the months in sliding window. So I'm going to say months in, months in sliding window like that. All right, and I think this 
is pretty interesting because at, you know this you know this isn't a shock right but as we move up in the agri like in a larger and larger sliding window we can see how much smoother it gets look how much smoother the yellow line is and those dark purple lines we can also tell like there's some data collection issues here um you know kind of before 2010 but um but yeah this is this is pretty interesting all right, so computing these kinds of sliding window um, aggregated um, quantities or metrics is important in you know so many parts of the like a data practitioner's life, and I think slider like sliders flexible functions um, are so helpful. I'm specifically going to be um, using them when we talk about model monitoring, um, and so you can look for that in the future. And I hope that this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.